My name is Sarah Lo, and presently my home is in Shanghai, China. I came to yoga. Um, I mean, yeah, it's a it's a story that really starts with my sister. My sister, who's um, a year and a half older than I am, um, when we both were in high school, found a library book that had a yoga posture in it, and became interested in that, and because I basically did everything that she did ever since we were little. Um, she got her ears pierced, I got my ears pierced, she went to summer camp, I went to summer camp, she went to yoga teacher training, I went to yoga teacher training. Um, but before that, um, in high school, she had started to become interested in it, so she really planted the seeds for me. But it wasn't until I was um, around 17 or 18 that I started to have a an understanding of the practice. I had an injury, so I was going to physical therapy, and a lot of the postures were yoga postures, although I found them extremely boring at the time. Um, and then I just started sort of sampling different flavors of yoga. I used to do a lot of Bikram yoga. Um, I've done some Kundalini yoga. I've done all manner of yoga. <laughs> um, but it really started with my sister. If she hadn't have ever become interested in yoga, I don't know that I would have really looked at it the way that I did. I started with a Bikram practice and then from there became curious about vinyasa. Um, I did a bit of hatha, sort of flavored like Iyengar for a while. Um, and I started practicing Ashtanga in Shanghai. Um, one of the women that I worked with asked me to teach Ashtanga. She thought that it would be a good practice for me as a teacher. Um, and I was familiar with the practice. I had done some Ashtanga, but I didn't really particularly enjoy it. Um, and when she asked me to teach it, I sort of <laughs> meditated <laughs> on it for a while and eventually started teaching it. And it was through teaching that I really um, started to fall in love with the practice and I started to really understand all the different elements um, of the practice. And then I went um, to do a teacher training with David Swenson, um, which was sort of the putting a ring on it <laughs> for me. <laughs> it was just, it, it was amazing. He was amazing, the training was amazing. It really sort of sealed the deal for me in Ashtanga. <laughs> so living in Shanghai is similar to living in a lot of international big cities like New York or Paris or London, um, except that everyone speaks Chinese. <laughs> um, and I co-own a yoga studio there in Shanghai. It's a small little studio called Yoga Garden. And we, um, my students are primarily Western expats. We have, um, some Chinese, um, local Chinese or Chinese folks that have spent time abroad. And the yoga scene there is really exciting because it's, it's changing very quickly. There's a lot of new things coming in. There's a lot of teachers like myself that end up in Shanghai and we have all these different backgrounds and styles and trainings. And settling in Shanghai um, makes it this amazing melting pot of, of yoga, similar to any city in the West. Um, there's big yoga brands, there's big yoga studios. Um, so it has that, that same feel that you would get um, here. But then there are smaller spaces or smaller studios like mine um, that are more community-based. Um, but you can really, I mean, you can do all the classes you do here that you would do in LA or you would do in New York, you can do in Shanghai. Being a teacher there is um, really fun. I think it's probably made me a better teacher because I've had to learn how to speak to people that don't speak my language natively. Um, I've had to, I, I've just met so many different people from all over the world and they're coming from all these different backgrounds, different yoga experiences. Um, so it's really broadened my horizons as a teacher. Um, and we're starting to get in Shanghai similar uh, sort of festivals and yoga gatherings and 
more like broader community-based events, which is really nice as well. I used to keep a blog with my sister, The Yogury. We both were um, really interested in yoga, and we were also interested in baking. So hence, The Yogury. <laughs> um, although we don't keep it up anymore, I do have a blog where I do some writing, and I also have some essays on um, recoveringyogi.com, um, which is a site for um, people in the yoga world that maybe have stepped away from the more like die-hard kind of like yoga vibes, and they're approaching their practice from a different way. So um, I have a piece there about traveling in India, but not doing any asana which was a big question I got when I went to India, was, oh, what ashram did you go to? Who did you study with? And I was like, I just did a road trip. <laughs> like, <laughs> that was my yoga. <laughs> so I, my advice to someone new to yoga or just starting out on their yoga path would be awesome, welcome. <laughs> um, it's a, a great practice to have, whether it's, meditation or something more dynamic like Ashtanga. Um, my advice would be to try a lot of things, to try a lot of teachers, um, to have a really open mind. I always say to the people that come to my classes, particularly the Ashtangis, that whether or not they know it, they're here in this class because they're curious about something. Even if they think they're just there to work out, they could go to the gym, they could go for a run. You come to yoga because you're curious about something about yourself and about other people. So for the newbies, I would say enjoy it and, and try to stay curious. <laughs>